Hi, in this video, we'll tackle DHCP configuration of MicroTik router using radius. Okay, the first step will be to configure the router itself. The second step will take a look on IP assignments inside Splinks. Uh, then I will show you how to configure the radio settings and then how to troubleshoot Splinks. And uh, we will also mention here possible issues that can happen and that we also have uh, not only radius, but also API, MicroTik API accounting. Uh, this is my simple setup that I have. As you can see, there is a router which is used as a PPPoE and uh, DHCP and few customers there and Splinks is connected. Uh, I use OpenVPN tunnel because my router is on private IP. Here is the configuration of a uh, router inside Splinks and the configuration of radius that we have is there. In MicroTik we have DHCP, PPP enabled a IP address, IP address of our source. And what we need to do in, inside the HCP server, we need to enable and configure it this way. So we will set up least time. I set up very short least time, but I recommend you to have at least one hour or 30 minutes. Uh, here I put three minutes just to have it very short to be able to disconnect customer because P PPP and DHCP have differences because PPPoE we can manage because it's a session while DHCP is initiated by customer and we cannot change it. So that's why we rely on least time. Uh, IP address pool, I can define some pools, but here I want Splinks to assign IP addresses and I say use radius, yes. And what I need to do then is also I need to go to my networks and define my networks there. Uh, like IP address gateway that will be used. Uh, here I can see my leases. So this one is um, dynamic enabled radio. So it means DR. And what else is missing here? So this is configuration there, use radius and radius is configured. Very important part is to enable incoming always. So splings will be able to change some values on phi, but it's rated more for PPP. Uh, what we have there, when customer is connected, PPP or DHCP, doesn't matter, we set up the queue. So here you can see the queue of the tariff plan. Also, if customer has a IPv6, it's applied for the IPv6 as well. So the first setup, the first step of the setup is done. What we did is that we configured MicroTik router. What we need to do is we need to check now how to assign IP addresses inside Splinks. Okay, let's go to customer that has a DHCP, this one, and this customer has an active internet service. So this one is disabled. I can display on the active services. So only one will be shown here. My IP address, this customer will always get the same IP address and his MAC address is this one. So this is his uh, MAC address and we use MAC address authentication. There are also option 82 or any other, and other options how to uh, configure DHCP authentication, but here I will tackle the basic one with the MAC address. So this is the MAC address of customer CPE device. And this is the IP address that he will get. As I said, customer can get IP address on a permanent basis, or we can uh, tell him that he will use IP on the dynamic from the pools. So this is the way how to assign IP to customer using pool. And another way is that we can say that router will assign IP address. Okay, so for now we have the permanent and the customer has the IP. If I go to my leases, so here we can see that this is the IP address and it expires after five minutes. So this is the active active IP address. So we can change it, we can leave it for now. Um, but as I said, there are three, three options. And always what we have in Splinks is uh, IPv4 networks. And there we can see who is using the IP addresses. So if I have this pool or for DHCP, I use the pool, the second one. If I click there, 
it shows me because I'm on the second page, but if I scroll and go up, it shows me that IP5 is used by this customer 24 and his, uh, this is his user service login. Okay, so this is how to assign IP addresses to end users. Uh, very important part is configuration of radius itself. And this is what I wanted to show and mention is uh, when I go to my configuration radius, let's go there and there are pools. So I can use this pools to assign IP addresses to, fa uh, to failed sessions when customer is not found, when he is blocked, when he got negative balance, Mac, incorrect Mac address, whatever. So all this situations are covered by different ranges. So I can use these ranges and assign IPs. If I want to use these ranges, what I need to do in the nest type Micratic, because we work with Micratic, I need to load the configuration, scroll down, and there, these are the settings that say use reject IP block. Okay, so this is what's happening. If customer will not be found and he will uh, get IP address, he will get this fake IP first. Okay, if customer is blocked and he, he will get this again, this reject pool. So how we can check it, we can disable customer. So for now we have this session is almost expired. Let's go to the customer and let's disable him. So if we disable him, it means that his service is stopped. So it doesn't exist. So it is somewhere on archived, but it, it's, it doesn't exist anymore. So if this customer will reconnect, this is what happened now. We see that customer received a different IP. The IP address is, uh, is a fake IP address. You can see there. And if we are uh, also, if we have configured there, uh, the address list, also this IP address is put to address list. So we have this combination right now. Uh, and I can apply filter rules. I can block this IP or I can block this address list. So that allows me, and this was configured and that was uh, done because of this configuration. So if I go there, again, load. And if you see, if you remember, this is the reject IP zero. So if I will not use it, it will just reject customer completely. Customer will not get any IP address. What's happening if we will enable the customer, but we will block him. Let's go again here. I will enable customer. So as you see, because we do not have the PPPoE session, we cannot just take and kick out uh, this customer out of the DHCP. We need to wait one, he, uh, he will restore his uh, DHCP uh, lease. So what I can do, I can just remove this and I will disconnect, disconnect router for a while and I'll connect it back. So now you can see customer is active. So it has this IP address. Now, what I do is I block my client. So if I block a client, again, nothing happens because we need to reestablish the session. We can wait for five minutes or I will just restart that. And what's happening there, you see that even two rules are created. So this IP address of client, because customer has a permanent IP, he receives always the same IP address. And even I, if I decide that I want to use some fake IPs, still this IP is used always. Uh, his IP is assigned to him because it's a permanent, but his IP is put to two of our uh, block address lists. The first one is blocked clients. This address list is used by my configuration of radius. So if I gain vote, Micratic, scroll down, we see that there is a blocked clients. So you can see reject one attribute is called blocked clients. What is the second one? The second one is called SPLBL blocked. This was created by API. If I go there and I have some PPP settings, PPP uh, logging, but we can see there 
there must be definitely somewhere is that API was connected. So Spring's connected via API and also created this blocking address list. And this is what we have inside settings. It says that disabled customer to address list. So this is what happened there. It just put the blocked customer to address list, uh, SPLB blocked. What we can try now is let's change this static IP to dynamic, okay? So the customer is active or let's leave him blocked, but let's change his IP from 20 to just some dynamic IP and give him this pool. What I can do now, I can just reconnect the client quickly. Of course, this API is also disappearing. Now when customer reconnects, you see the difference. So he was blocked before and always he got the same IP. Now, because we, we tell him to use uh, IP before pool and uh, he's, he's in the status blocked, so he is getting IP from fake pool and he is put to the blocked clients. If I activate this client, reconnecting him quickly, so he gets correct IP address. So what I want you to understand here is that these two parts of the configuration are very important for how you provide access to your customers. So if, if they are not authenticated, if they are just simply rejected or they get some IP address, and if you block them, if they will get IP address and put to reject that IP uh, attribute with the address list, or you don't use this uh, like a fake IP addresses. And also this is the way these two, two things are independent. And this both or these four IPs, they are related to these four IPs that we have here. Um, so when we have all this configured, what I want to mention is in the queue, we have a queue created. So this is a queue with a speed. What is important to mention here is how to troubleshoot and the possible issues. So let's start with the possible issues. Uh, session timeout. So this is very, very important part of Splinks and uh, part of MicroT configuration, especially. Uh, we need inside settings, if you work with MicroT, we need always to write there session timeout, which means the least time. If I use only these settings here inside IP DHCP server, I inside my configuration, I have my least time. So if I set a, use only this without attribute in the radius, uh, the customer who uh, we need to block or the customer who we need to, who, who doesn't exist in Splinks and he will just try to reconnect back with the existing MAC address, uh, he can still get access, you know, so the lease, if, if the lease is still maintained, what we need to do, we need to configure and set up radius session timeout. And this will allow Micritic to reestablish the session using radius. Okay, so this is important part. The first one, uh, this is important because we use it for you know, setting up speed limits. And uh, if we go there to the next point, IP accounting is something what we can get using DHCP, DHCP accounting, but also we have IP accounting there in the version six and five and four of MicroTik. It's, it's there so I can enable accounting. And based on this enable accounting, I can get statistics using Splinks as well. So not only DHCP, but I can also grab accounting from routers using API. Okay, so this is the API connection and I can use, if I set up a radius and API accounting, I will use API accounting instead of radius accounting. This is sometimes needed 
when the, we need the really accurate accounting and uh, Mikritik so far sometimes has this, uh, the issues with uh, accuracy of radius accounting. So this one is quite accurate, so we still use it. The next point to mention is safe leases to disk. So this is a very important part of DHCP configuration of Mikritik to be able to reestablish the sessions correctly to reestablish uh, the leases correctly, what we need to do is we need to, it's recommended here to set up in DHCP config, store leases on disk never, okay? To not be saved because if it's saved, then there can be issues with uh, resetting and uh, reestablishing the, the lease. So that's one point more. And what I want to show is how to troubleshoot. How to troubleshoot what's happening. Uh, the first part is if I go to administration and inside files, there are several files. The first one is uh, short, that shows radius short walk. Okay, the customer not found, it got this reject IP, customer walk in. And then if I enable debug in my configuration, I have also debug files available, looks like more detailed view on what's happening. The COA, it's a communication from Splinks to uh, Mikrotik or to router in general, to NAS. So these are, for example, disconnect messages when we need to disconnect session of customer. And if I want to enable or disable debug, it's enabled under configuration and radius extended. So now it's enabled by default is disabled. So if you enable it, it starts to save uh, this debug to the debug file, restart config, restart radius. And uh, the last part I wanted to mention is what do we have in Splinks in terms of um, CLI? So this is, so if I, what I can do, so now I connect it to my Splink server and we have two services, service free radius and uh, service sp Splinks radius, ray DG. So these two services, this one is what you see directly here inside our uh, messages. So this debug COA in short is related to what's happening inside Splinks inside database. And this free radius, this is what's happening on the packet level. If I want to see that packets are received or not received at all, what I can do, I can kill all free radius and what I can do, I can run my free radius in the debug mode. So here you can see that accounting packets are arriving and what is the response of uh, Splinks. So this is more deeper analyzing of what's happening on the radius side. Uh, that's all for now. Uh, thank you for your time.